The death of a political figure often prompts public commemorations. This was especially the case with the death of an American president. At the twilight of the Civil War, the news on April 15, 1865, of Abraham Lincoln's assassination stunned the nation. Tributes and eulogies filled newspapers and public addresses around the country. Indiana was no exception. In our collections, the archives has one of the more unique and poignant memorials for the fallen leader, one steeped in literary illusion and reflective mourning, a eulogy from the Marion County Circuit Court. Nearly all of Indiana's 92 counties have a circuit court, presided over by a judge and a clerk. The clerk of the court records the cases, trials, and any other developments that arise within its jurisdiction. During the 19th century, these records were handwritten. After Lincoln's assassination, Judge Fabius M. Finch and prominent attorney James Morrison convened the Indianapolis Bar Association and requested that the Marion County Circuit Court record a eulogy to the fallen Commander-in-Chief. In the hour of national grief, especially for a president who grew up in Indiana, the request was fulfilled. This is the Marion County Circuit Court's eulogy for President Abraham Lincoln written on Monday, April 17, 1865. As was common custom during the 19th century, the pages are bordered in black, signifying the mourning of a politician or public leader. Judge Finch wrote the eulogy for President Lincoln himself. It is a document full of poetic language for the fallen chief executive. The assassination of Abraham Lincoln, President of the United States, on the evening of the 14th day of April 1865, Judge Finch wrote, is an event so shocking and deplorable as to fill the heart of every citizen worthy of his birthright with the keenest anguish. In this dreadful tragedy, acted almost in the face of the nation, no circumstance of horror seems wanting. Finch knew firsthand the tragedies of the Civil War. His oldest son, Hennage, died in service of the Union. His words most certainly speak of Lincoln, but knowing the context of Finch's life underscores the personal grief which may have animated his emotions. From there, Finch extolled Lincoln's qualities, writing, His genial nature, his great heart full of tenderness and sympathy, his boundless charity for the faults of enemies as well as of friends, his unfailing good sense displayed in forms of reasoning and modes of expression entirely his own and perfectly adopted to touch the judgments and control the actions of plain men. While Lincoln's presidency often sparked intense debate among Hoosiers, especially editors of the pro-democratic Indiana State Sentinel, many like Finch were quick to acknowledge Lincoln's better angels, as the slain leader had said of the citizenry only four years before. Finch's eulogy also memorialized Lincoln through literature, a feature that the 16th president would have appreciated. Three separate passages from titans of the Western canon of letters, Pope, Shakespeare, and Tennyson, allude to Lincoln's own importance in the American canon of political rhetoric. The first quotation is from British poet Alexander Pope's Epistle to Robert, Earl of Oxford and Mortimer, published in 1721 a soul supreme in each hard instance tried, above all pain, all passion, all pride, the page of power, the blasts of public breath, the lust of lucre, and the dread of death. Pope wrote this for Robert Harley, a British politician and parliamentarian who as Lord Treasurer successfully placated the Protestant and Catholic factions of civil life during the reign of Queen Anne. He was accused of treason and imprisoned for two years before being acquitted of all charges. Perhaps Finch chose this poem as a recognition of Lincoln's leadership among two warring factions in his own time. The second passage comes from William Shakespeare's Macbeth, Act 1, Scene 7. It reads, Born his difficulties so meek hath been, so clear in the great office that his virtues will plead like angels, trumpet-tongued, against the deep damnation of his takeoff. In this scene, Macbeth is speaking of King Duncan, the good-natured leader who Macbeth later kills in a quest for power. Macbeth was Lincoln's favorite Shakespeare play, 
one he reportedly carried with him on the legal circuit as a young man. The literate public in America during the 19th century, who were well-versed in Shakespeare, likely made the literary connection between Macbeth and Duncan and assassin John Wilkes Booth and Lincoln. In fact, this passage was later printed on broadsides after the assassination and spread throughout the country. Finch may have seen these posters as he was drafting the language, or like Lincoln, he may have known the text well. The final selection comes from the poet Alfred Lord Tennyson and his work Ode on the Death of the Duke of Wellington. The stanzas read, O friends, our chief state oracle is mute, mourn for the man of long enduring blood, the statesman, moderate, resolute, whole in himself a common good. Mourn for the man of amplest influence, yet clearest of ambitious crime, our greatest yet with least pretense, rich in saving common sense, and as the greatest only are, in his simplicity sublime. Written for Arthur Wellesley, first Duke of Wellington, former Prime Minister and the man who led the British to victory against Napoleon at Waterloo, Ode circulated around the time of Lincoln's death, especially in newspapers. Lincoln's connection to Wellesley is actually pretty clear. Both led their armies to successful victories against a powerful enemy. For Wellesley, it was the French, and for Lincoln, it was the Confederacy. And both advocated policies that led to the emancipation of some of their nation's people. Wellesley helped grant full citizenship to Catholics in Britain, and Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation and the Joint Resolution for the proposed 13th Amendment to the Constitution, which after ratification would free enslaved African Americans in the United States. The sublime simplicity and amplest influence of Abraham Lincoln, like with the Duke of Wellington, comes through loud and clear in Finch's eulogy. With his death in 1865, Abraham Lincoln became a national martyr and a secular saint. Monuments, parks, museums, and historical institutions exist throughout the world to share his legacy. While the Marion County Circuit Court's eulogy is not as grand as the Lincoln Memorial, or, as Archives volunteer Robert F. Gilliatt noted, not as poetic as Walt Whitman's famous poem, O Captain, My Captain, it is a solemn and eloquent tribute to the nation's most revered president. Thanks for watching. Please click like if you enjoyed this video and make sure to subscribe to keep updated on all new videos. Finally, leave a comment or a story idea for a future episode. We want to hear from you.